What's good everyone? This right here is my DJI Mobile 2 from DJI and I'm going to be sharing with you guys some tips and tricks that I found over the time of using this that you should know to get the most out of this Osmo. Now although this tutorial is nice and all but there's a bunch of things that it doesn't really fully cover so let's get started. So I had this Osmo for about a month now. I also made a review about it. You click the little i card on top or I click on the link in the video description down below if you want to hear more about my opinion of what I think about this. But uh, don't do that just yet. Do that after this video, of course. Now I'm going to go ahead and start off with the most basic tips because I know some of you guys might not be aware of this, but this part over here behind the gimbal, it's adjustable. This is really great and you should always move around and adjust if you have a large phone like an iPhone 10, a Note, or a plus for example because not only these two points are able to be adjusted but this back part is able to be adjusted as well and the better the balance the more smoother the performance off the gimbal as well as the longer battery life you'll get and of course you want to perform this while the gimbal is turned off to prevent risking damaging the gimbal or your phone and you'll know you're set whenever the phone is able to be balanced like this without the gimbal being powered on now let's go ahead and go over the button layouts as well as some hand-free shortcuts. The left we have the zoom in and zoom out slider as well as the pivoting joystick controller. Our mode buttons down here that if you double tap will recenter the camera's position and if you tap it once it will lock that position and any movement that you do the gimbal will stay put. The LED light will also be yellow to indicate that it's locked and then if you tap once once again you'll notice that the LED light turns green and the gimbal will rotate to whatever position you're facing it. So to recap the mode button, single tap since we had it on lock will lock our gimbal set to that fixed locked position. Then now if we triple press the mode button we switch from the back camera to the front camera and vice versa. But you can't do this while recording, unfortunately. And then instead of pressing the screen to record, if you tap the red button once, it'll begin recording. Tap again to end recording. Hold down, it'll do a photo burst. And that is all the button commands if you want to do everything hands-free off the screen. Now, since the Mobile 2 now has support for a tripod mount, I would highly advise picking yourself up a mini, easy-to-carry-around tripod. The one you see here came included with my Samsung Gear 360 cam but I've seen these sell separately on eBay for around 10 bucks, and this one to me seems to be the perfect size. The Samsung 360 doesn't sell for that much, so you could get yours by purchasing the cam as well, but the benefit and the beauty of having a tripod on the go like this is that you could take time lapse wherever you want instead of just balancing the gimbal on a flat surface and risk the wind from knocking over the gimbal. I already experienced this, so take my word for it. There will be links in the video description down below on some tripods that I'll recommend as well as the Gear 360. So before shooting a time lapse video, it's always good to have the camera locked on to a still subject and have the exposure adjusted as well. Performing this will eliminate the risk of a person or sunlight to, to interfere with the footage when the camera needs to automatically refocus or auto adjust. And as we see here with a regular focus, it will continue focusing on whatever subject gets in front. But if we do the auto lock, it's going to stay fixed and won't adjust the exposure or anything. And just in case you're not aware on how to do it, because you never know, simply hold down on the screen or the subject you want to lock onto, and if you lower it, you can also adjust the exposure that way. So now, all your time lapse are always going to come out undisturbed without any adjustments. And when performing this on a hyperlapse, there's no need to do this, since it will pretty much hold everything on that square setting. Now the final thing I wish to share is doing a time lapse on a subject without needing to use the hyperlapse feature. So let's say you're just casually walking but you're in a bit of a hurry or just want more control of your footage without needing to rely on the DJI app. So if you use track and lock onto the subject, you could take that footage and later on edit it to whatever speed you want in your control. For you could do cool stuff like this. You're able to do more creative stuff, adding a mix of slow motion as well as fast motion in one clip. Well, this is going to be it for this video. Just wanted to share with you guys some tips and tricks that I started using to get the most out of my Osmo. If you have something you wish to share, feel free to comment down below. And make sure to also like and subscribe if you're not to help support this channel. But until next time, hope to see you on the next one. Peace.